Well, hopefully you haven't packed away your candles and inverters and you filled up your generators if you're lucky enough to have one. ESCOM, you'll see top right-hand side of your screen implementing stage two rolling blackouts. This came into play at around five o'clock this morning. It's going to be increased as well, I'm afraid, to stage four uh, during the evening peak. Roger Lilly, energy analyst, back with us uh, on ENC. Hello to you, Roger. So here we are once again uh, back into blackouts. We'll get to the power plans and what we can do uh, as far as uh, the presidential plan is concerned in a moment. First of all, help us understand, how did we get here? Generating capacity, I understand. What does that mean? Good morning. Uh, yeah, Gareth, thank you for inviting me to your show this morning. Look, the, the, the situation hasn't really changed. Uh, Eskom's uh, old, unreliable power stations continue to let us down. So we, we, we're still short of electricity by some 4,000 to 6,000 megawatts, which is equivalent to perhaps two major cities in this country. Um, and, you know, you know, so load shedding is, is something we're going to have to live with until the president's plan has been implemented. Let's talk about that presidential plan for a moment because we've now been uh, talking about uh, the power stations. The big six uh, is, is what we're all eyeing and looking at at the moment. So what are the big six going to do for us as far as blackouts are concerned? Well, look, the, the, the big focus at the moment is to spend as much time and money on those uh, big, big power stations to provide us with power in the interim. Um, uh, Unfortunately, there hasn't been sufficient money, there hasn't been sufficient skills uh, to get the power stations up and running reliably. Um, one of the implementations uh, that the president has suggested is giving uh, Eskom freedom to buy spare parts directly from the manufacturers of the equipment instead of via local agents, which have added not just cost, but also caused delays uh, through a procurement system. So. You, you know, we're hoping that uh, those power stations become a little bit more uh, reliable, a little bit more dependable, and therefore provide us with sufficient power to at least keep the lo loads uh, shedding stages to low numbers. In the interim, of course, new generation is desperately needed, and fortunately, that's where the private sector is able to come on board and provide power more quickly than, than, than uh, building a new coal-fired power station would be. Yeah, quite right. The IPPs has been a big talking point. Those power stations, by the way, uh, Roger, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Kendall, Majuba, Tutuka, Kusile, Duva uh, and Matla are the big six that we're talking about at the moment. So on IPPs then, part of the presidential power plan, uh, again, everyone wants to know it's all good and well for us to throw around megawatts that are missing, missing and coming back online and maintenance. As far as IPPs and government buying back and ESCOM buying back from IPPs, how quickly could that at least get uh, us to lower levels of blackouts, if not completely? Well, it, what we've seen historically uh, ever since 2014, when the uh, independent power producer program began, um, we've seen that uh, a, a new wind or solar farm takes approximately 24 months to build from the time uh, that it's been approved by government. So. Uh, you know, we, we, we've, we've already got some 5,000 megawatts from IPPs available. There's another 2,000 in the pipeline right now. And from the president's announcement, another 5,200 will be coming in bid window six. So uh, we, we're really looking towards the middle, perhaps, of 2025 uh, to see uh, load shedding to be something of the past. Uh, when it comes to the maintenance uh, and uh, the regeneration of these big six uh, power stations, it's all good and well to have the permission, essentially, from government to go and buy directly from the manufacturers. Do we or do you get the sense, Roger, that we've got the skills in this country, not A, not only A, to get them up and running, but then to maintain them? Because that's been the issue over the years as well, is the maintenance of them long term after they are repaired up to the standards they should be. Well, look, we know that there was uh, a, a large uh, loss of skilled personnel from Eskimo over the years. Um, and unfortunately, some of those people who, were re who replaced the skilled personnel have not had the experience or necessary training uh, to come up to speed quickly enough. So we definitely have a, have a shortage there. And we know that the, the president alluded to that by suggesting that Eskom call back some of, of, of the previous uh, employees uh, to come and assist in this regard. 
how well that will be received and how many of those ex-employees will actually be available to join the team is yet to be seen. Would it be fair, tell me what you make of this comment, if I was to uh, put this uh, to you. Politics, it's not the technology, it's politics that's holding us back from getting out of load shedding and blackouts with, uh, within two years. Is that fair? Yes, there's too much political interference, in my opinion. Um, this is part of the problem because Eskom is a state-owned entity and is therefore uh, managed by politicians instead of by technocrats. I think that's part of the problem. I think if Eskom was a private entity, uh, it would be run very differently with different agendas. Um, we've seen lots of meddling. We've seen appointments of unsuitable people in senior positions simply because of political interference over the years. Um, I believe we're out of that at the moment to a large degree. I think the, 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 the current political uh, uh, um, Landscape is different in the sense that uh, there's there's more desire from politi at political levels to see Eskom uh, recover properly rather than uh, rent seeking for their friends. And while I do think there are many people who would support the idea, Roger, of a privatised ESCOM, that in its own will have its, its issues as well because you'll have multiple stakeholders with their own interests. It's not going to be uh, a quick fix either. There will be uh, issues that will have to be dealt with even if it was privatised. It won't end blackouts within three, four months, will it? No, it wouldn't. Um, in fact, ESCOM, as you know, is being broken up into three separate entities and the generation entity would only be would be the only part really that you could really privatize um, because then you could have competition between generators in terms of transmission in, that's the high voltage power lines uh, the pylons that we see crisscrossing our country mm. that remains in state hands um, and distribution might land up at municipal level where, where, where it provides power directly to people's homes and businesses. But at generation level, where you can have both government and private companies generating electricity into a state-owned grid uh, and then distributed through a municipal uh, distribution system, I think would make things a lot more efficient uh, and certainly would get away from some of the political interference that has uh, dogged the, 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 the Electricity Commission mm. for so long. Mm, certainly for far too long now, many people would say. Roger, uh, just before I say goodbye to you, can we just come back to the blackouts, the stages at the moment? Uh, because I know there's yes. forecast models and there's uh, data that someone like you could look at. Uh, we're hearing three days of this load shedding, stage two, stage four. Uh, is that your expectation by the weekend? Uh, it should be back. We've recouped the emergency supplies that we need, or would it be longer going into the weekend? So it depends on two things. It depends on the load, how the load continues, and that will depend largely on the weather. So if we have a, a, a sudden cold snap, for instance, then load will, will increase and that will delay things. And of course, it depends on whether or not this unreliable equipment can be made to stand up uh, long enough. So, yeah, it's, it, it's a very difficult statement to, 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 to analyze carefully. <laughs> that is certainly the hope, that is the plan, but things change very quickly. Um, we must understand that the electricity supply is indeed a very dynamic uh, situation uh, and things change quickly. Yeah, I thought, I, would, I thought I would try with the last question, see if uh, Roger Lilly has a crystal ball hidden around there somewhere. Maybe he can give us some good news. But Roger, always good to talk to you. Uh, thanks so much for joining us uh, on the show this morning. Roger Lilly, uh, energy analyst. Uh, current stage two blackouts is what we're dealing with. Uh, stage four as of 4 p.m. this afternoon. And as Roger Lilly says, uh, hopefully if all things, weather, uh, including uh, power stations, come back online after maintenance quickly, it might be over by the weekend. But me personally, I wouldn't hold your breath or put away your candles.